Welcome to Cancer and Peace, everyone. My name is Sean Stewart, and I'm going to facilitate a conversation with my good friend, Peter Scalzo. And today we're going to talk about purpose, how finding your purpose helps move you towards hope. And in a cancer journey, being without hope is not a great place to be, as I think you've probably experienced several of those areas in your own life. Yes. And so we thought it might be good Mm -hmm. just to talk about the importance of finding purpose. Yes. And there's probably a lot of layers of this. And is it okay if I kick it off with my school stories? I think it might be interesting just to put it as a concept and then let's put it into how that aligns with the cancer thing. So um, Peter and I both just did a gala event. And one of the things I had run across is back in February of 2022, 2023, sorry. And there was a story that came out about 23 Baltimore school schools that had tested where zero students tested proficient for uh, proficiency in math. And that shocked me for a second. I was like, how is that possible that that could be the case? And there's probably a lot of factors that go into it. But the thing that really stuck out to me is there had to be at least one student who was a math prodigy out of 23 schools. There had to be many students who had capabilities. And so you could, I'm sure there'll be people that blame it on the teachers or the curriculum or a number of things, but to get to zero, that's like a really special place. Like the power of zero is just really hard to get to. And, and it dawned on me that there has to be something that's bigger than just those things that would be easier explained. And, and the thing I got to was purpose if you could get to a point where there's not a purpose in taking the test, there's not a purpose in pursuing this, why bother? Then you could get to zero. And that's the only thing I could come up with. And maybe there's a different explanation, but it just, to me, helped see that. And I saw it was because we're working with New York City school kids. Mm. And I see so many of them. The reason why I come to that point was I've seen so many of them where purpose was missing. Mm. And when purpose was missing, they showed up in kind of a, I don't even care. They didn't try there was no effort. And that's why I was thinking that. And, and it related to me that that could happen in the cancer journey. Like if Mm -hmm. you lose your purpose, then you kind of lose your hope. You just kind of give up and stop moving forward. And I don't know if that resonates with you, but I think it does, but maybe, you know, just I'll let you relate that into the cancer journey, even your cancer journey, if then maybe the ups and downs that you've gone through, and then we'll talk about that a little bit further. Yeah, thank you, Sean. That's an interesting example from the school system. But I I definitely think that uh, purpose in a cancer journey is a huge topic. I've seen it done purposeless without much purpose and then done purposeful with a lot of purpose. And to me, purpose provides meaning. So it it can become a meaningful journey. In fact, some people have said it's the most meaningful journey that they've ever taken was getting diagnosed with cancer, having to deal with uh, the tough emotions of cancer, and then coming out at a place uh, that it was painful and hurt and and involved lots of disillusionment, despair. But in the end, they look back and say, wow, there was, I had a, I found a lot of meaning in that and therefore a lot of purpose, you know, and then of course hope. But I think that um, let's, talk for a minute about the person who gets diagnosed with a terminal diagnosis. Yeah. And I, and I, that's a, that's a difficult, really difficult journey to be in. And, and I've been with those people before I've been with them from diagnosis to end of life and purpose and is a huge topic of discussion for the, for them. Yeah. And for me with them. And, um, and I think that, a life that's meaningful and is one that's purposeful. And I know you'll tie that in with hope, but um, I have I have really discussed this a lot with cancer patients who are moving to the end of their life. And um, for them, it was a matter of getting them to focus on purpose. And a lot of them had a great purpose in their cancer journey. In other words, relationships were restored that probably would have never been restored. Mm. Things were said to loved ones that maybe never would have been said. Um, Spiritual growth and emotional growth happened 
because of the cancer diagnosis and, and journey. Um, and they were actually thankful for that piece of it, for the nearness they felt to God um, if they were spiritual people. Um, but there, there's a tendency, and I know this is not the subject of the podcast, but to say, oh, I've been diagnosed with cancer. I'm a burden. I'm a burden on my family, on the medical community, on everyone. And yet your family members uh, are happy, believe it or not, or joyful, I should say, to come alongside of, of the cancer patient. That's been my experience every time. Was mm -hmm. it difficult? Yes. Painful? Yes. But it was almost like their honor and privilege to come alongside that loved one and journey with them. And I think that's what we tend as cancer patients to, to dismiss so quickly, is that our journey has a deep impact on the people around us. And I've been, I'm almost going, I'm almost in my 18th year now on my cancer journey and, you know, spent many nights in the hospital twice been told to go home and call hospice by a major cancer center. But out of my six children, just this one fact alone, we were never a medical family. Like we have business people, real estate people, and I'm an attorney. But out of my six kids, one is a third year medical student. One is an ICU nurse down in New York City. And the other one's a biomedical engineer working for a pharma on cancer drugs. Hmm. So even if just, let's say my, my cancer journey produced that and they have an impact on people's lives medically, is it worth it? Yeah, there's a great purpose with that. Hmm. I haven't connected the dots of the, yeah, the purpose that they actually were able to better other people's lives. And that's and, just that, I mean. Yeah. Um, I was, I'm just going to relay. I was in the hospital last month. Um, <clears throat> I had to get a surgical procedure of stents being placed in my urinary system and doctor had a tough time, couldn't get one of the stents back in. And, and so I had to spend the night and I was, um, to me purpose is, is, is getting a message out that I believe God has put on my heart to speak out about my cancer journey, about being transparent, vulnerable in my cancer journey, uh, everything about it. And um, so I was what I would call hangry. Hangry. <laughs> yeah, because I had I had surgery and I had nothing to eat that day. And yep. it was nighttime. By the time they got me up to my room, I asked for a menu for four times. And I was getting angry. Finally, the fifth time I got a menu. And I'm, I'm very... The rooms are not big in the hospital I was in in New York, but right next to me was this 80-something-year-old man who who was there from some surgeries that he had, and sweet man, nice as can, can be, you know, and I'm hangry, and then I spend the night, and I'm not equipped for an overnight and bring any of my stuff, and I, you know, wake up the next morning, and then I'm down in the nuclear medicine doing a, uh, renal scans of the kidneys and getting ultrasounds. And all I want to do is go home. The doctor said, you can go home the next day. And so they pull me back down for a further scan. And it was like three in the afternoon. And I'm, I'm like, I just want to get out of here. <laughs> and um, finally, I was going to be discharged. My son came. It was like five in the afternoon, whatever. And this man and his wife were being discharged too. And uh, almost at the same time, sweet couple. And um, and as I was exiting the room, he, he said to me, oh, by the way, I ordered your book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. And I was like. This is the first time I've heard this story. So this yeah. Is and I was like, I, I don't even remember saying anything. I might have said, yeah, I've been in hospitals a lot. I'm, this is my 17th year of a cancer journey. I don't remember saying I had a book, but he said, oh, yeah, we ordered your book. And I said, it's it's a faith-based book. It's it's quite a journey. He said, I know. Yeah, we're looking forward to reading it. But I thought, you're going to learn how to be hangry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought God even had a purpose when I was, wow. when I wasn't in that. 
that's, thinking that way at all. That's a great story. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think that really connects some dots there. I like that a lot. Thanks for sharing yeah. that. That's yeah. uh, a, <laughs> cause you're like thinking about how I thought, yeah, in spite of me, meal is what's so important. <laughs> yeah. And there's a guy over here who's going, I want to find, uh, I want to yes. find out about cancer and peace. <laughs> yeah. And in spite of me, God still moved. Wow. <laughs> That's so funny. Now, just just thinking about the experience and the, how profound and sometimes that God is just to kind of reveal something about what's really going on. <laughs> yeah, you and I had talked before, and um, you had asked a hard question. That was, hey, what about somebody who is given? You talked about end of life, but what about a six week diagnosis? You know, there's something really short, um, and then the, like, what's the purpose? And I thought that was a great question. You know, said because. It, seems like there's cases where it's hard to find purpose and yet um and yet there is and uh i'll let you give your answer to that and then i'll share my story that i shared with you earlier um from my buddy john yeah i mean that's powerful but i'll i mean this happened recently to pastors Mm -hmm. who i'm close to Mm -hmm. a brother in his 50s got diagnosed with six weeks left to live and they have very close family. He had a lot of kids. Very difficult for them to process. And they had to process their anger towards God and what was happening, this situation. Hoping for a miracle of healing didn't happen physically on this earth. Um, but one thing that I remember them talking about was the closeness they felt as a family, as they came together around this man, singing hymns, praying with each other, speaking with each other, memories. I mean, the relationships with their family, I think, was unbelievably strengthened through this process. And the man who passed was able to show his children, his family, that um Dying is really a part of life. Yeah, That transition is really a part of our lives, of what we go through. We're all going to experience it. So I believe there was great purpose shown in that journey, uh, that his entire family, that they uh, really benefited from that experience. I mean, no one wants to see anyone pass like that, especially as young as he was. It was pancreatic cancer. Um but I can, and I'm sure if you sat the people down in the family, they would say it was an unbelievable event in their lives. Yeah, that just you know? reminds me because we had, you were my good friend, but he lived here on our property with us here that passed away from pancreatic cancer just a little over a couple of years ago. And uh, I remember you telling me at the time, Sean, this is going to be one of the most meaningful journeys that you're going to have with them. And it was, it was deeply meaningful. And something that stuck out, and then we were talking about uh, how you can find a lot of healing and clarity in family situations. And in that window of time, that there's a lot that uh, is good. And and I have a good friend that uh, you've met too now. Uh, His name's John. And he talked about um, his dad, who was an alcoholic uh, for most of his adult life. And at some point in time, closer to the end of his life, though he went through a journey. He went to AA, he became sober, and there was a lot of healing in their relationship. In fact, at times it was so rocky. He lived with his grandparents for most of his uh, his uh, growing up years. And it was interesting, though, because his comment to me was really fascinating. It was, hey, Sean, you know, I'm amazed at how much healing can happen in a short amount of time. So because uh, decades were erased mm. in just a few years. And we were close when he died. The two of them were close. They'd shared a lot and so much healing had taken place. And I, and I was just thinking what a gift that was, that time of healing that he was given. And I think that might be part of the messages. Um, we gave a bonus episode on this podcast that was the dark night of the soul. It's like when you're given a message like that, uh, you're given the wall or the dark night of the soul. And it's probably the place where clarity and meaning can be found the, the, in the shortest amount of time, but it, it's like as if a laser clarity as to what's important. Mm. 
and then an opportunity to have some of the most meaningful times are there. I know that it feels, um, well, it's hard because you're talking about how one deals with deep suffering and loss. But in that window, I do think that there's something, there's deep purpose because there's so much meaning. Yeah, you know, the the linkage there between loss and purpose is really interesting because you'd think it would be a paradox. And I think about when I was told to go home and stop practicing law. And, you know, my family life was struggling, my marriage was struggling, and uh, I knew I would have to sell the house because I couldn't do the house anymore. And um, so here I was sent home to pass. It was in 2017. And I I didn't have a house anymore. I had a rental. And and um, at that time, my wife had gone to China for months to to teach English and do some stuff. And and I was there with my daughter um, and not practicing law or doing those things that you think might bring me the greatest purpose, right? My job and all that. And um, what I found out was that, yes, my job was a gift and wonderful to be able to provide for my family, but it didn't bring purpose and meaning. And um, and I entered into a place of, okay, Lord, I'm ready to pass. And that's a whole nother probably podcast is how did I prepare myself for, for passing? Uh, it was a journey for me, but um, things had happened and immunotherapy kicked in and really a miracle of healing happened. And I ended up not passing, but I never went back to work. And so someone might say, I can't work. I'm too exhausted, too fatigued. But, um, you know, someone might ask, well, how, where do you, how do you find purpose and meaning? And and um, it's really interesting, the journey I'm on. I would have never done a slow down spirituality journey ever. Mm-hmm. But for Sean, uh, Pete Scazzera, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality, the concepts from that, and then having the time to mm. do silence and solitude, contemplative Bible reading, daily inventory from recovery, all these things which weren't in the doing circle anymore. They were just in the being circle. Can I be with God? And uh, I would have never gone on that journey, and I would have never been on volunteering as much in the recovery space and you know, I, I had asked for a hot fudge Sunday ministry years ago that everyone would sit around <laughs> and eat hot fudge Sundays. You're ridiculous. But I got a cancer ministry. <laughs> who have ever thought? Who would have uh, ever thought that a misery that a that a ministry could come out of pain and a suffering? Hot fudge Sunday ministry. <laughs> but it did. A well, purposeful ministry came out of soft pain and suffering. I want to delve into that a little bit further, too, because uh, you highlighted something that is implied. But I guess I'd like to move it out of the implied into the direct, and that is you described purpose of having time to have relationship mm. with God. And and I also think it's with others, too. It's a part of, because then you described, hey, you were able to do ministry, but ministry wasn't preaching and teaching. Right. Ministry has been having deep relationship right. with others in your life. And so, and I keep thinking, it's like, yeah, we've all walked through cemeteries and to date I haven't seen, um, you know, best carpenter, uh, carpenter of the year, or, um, you know, he, he loved cars, you know, or something <laughs> like that. Those are, that's, there's not real purpose there. It's not that those things aren't great and that um, being good at, at a craft isn't important. I think that is, but where we find real purpose at least from the, how the cemetery testifies, is relationships. Um, you know, you might see a great husband, you might see a beloved son, you may see something that <coughs> excuse me he he walked with God and yeah. loved God. Those are things that you see because they describe purpose and mm-hmm. meaning. And so, and I think that is something for us to just digest in. What happens in those uh, shorter windows is the clarity of that becomes heightened. And so when you have six weeks, you're not going to try to become the best carpenter. Uh, You're not going to try to see if I can restore my car (laughs) in the next six weeks to finish it out that I'm working on. Um, It's all going to be relational. All that's just going to fall by the wayside and it's going to be relational because the purpose is in that space. And it's so easy in our busyness of life, 
life to lose that. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's the point is that um, when there's purpose, there's deep hope. And if purpose comes from relationships, much can be accomplished, much can be restored, much can be built even. It doesn't all have to be restoration. This can be uh, with clarity and understanding. Deep love can be expressed when, even in short amount of times, because so much has been stripped away. Yeah, and the cancer journey is tailor-made for that because there's a lot of uh, bedtime and rest time because you're unable to, the energy is difficult and um, and it's a good time for people to visit, come over and sit and talk. And, you know, I've had, I had a good friend, real good friend who passed from cancer during COVID. And she said to me, uh, have I done anything to you that I need to apologize for? Hmm. She asked me that twice. I said, no. No, but I, I thought that was really interesting. She had to, she knew that she was terminal. She did pass and she had a desire to restore relationships. Make amends, yeah. Yes. Which is a big part of the recovery process yes. is to yep. make amends. And I think that's something to think about on the purpose journey is um, if you're in that space, uh, a great starting point is to take ownership for your own life, mm -hmm. no blame and yeah, make amends to where there's opportunity there and then let God open the door. You can't demand the response that you're going to get, but let God open the door re relationship. And I think what happens, I've seen it in my own life, but I'm thinking about my friend who talked about his dad and how much was restored. These guys were great friends when he died in just a few short years and they couldn't live together. Uh, for many, um, and we're in cutoff land for for large blocks of time. That amazes me, and so there's so much opportunity. There's such deep purpose that can happen um, as clarity as things are stripped away. I think we've talked about cancer being a stripping, uh, a stripping of all these other things off, and asking you to get to what's essential in your life. Yeah. Do we have time for you to just <clears throat> tie in hope a little bit more with purpose? Yeah. And so I started the podcast out uh, and I had tried to connect the fact that one of the things that I see is hopelessness uh, in society today. And hopelessness uh, becomes, you know, one of the things that you have to recognize when it comes to hope is that hope comes from a belief in something. And, and so and one of the things that we recognize from our own journeys is that, um, and what I think you found in this and is, um, is there's a lot that you can look at from a biblical perspective, but it is that your cancer journey has purpose. And the very fact that there's purpose means that there's hope in something greater also is that, um, it's not a meaningless existence. It's a meaningful existence. And if there is meaning, the meaning is attached to someone in a relationship with someone. And I think uh, as you embrace that, um, that's not just for a moment in time. Um, that's a hope that is eternal. And so I think as we uh, look around us, I think there's a lot of hopelessness that's come into the world because we've stripped away uh, the eternal. We've stripped away... Uh, great and long and meaningful relationships, which means we're stripping away hope. Mm. And so you and I have talked a bunch about, um, you know, uh, where our hope is placed in, in Christ, mm -hmm. but it's an eternal hope, mm -hmm. but it's also a relational hope. Mm -hmm. And so when we find meaning and purpose in that relationship, we find a hope that springs uh, eternal. And that I think is pretty important because, then you can even approach your very last day knowing that tomorrow is going to be even better. And so much a, a conversation you and I have had is that there's a misunderstanding about heaven. Mm -hmm. And there's this idea that it, maybe it's just harps on clouds or something that would be really boring existence. And we have a hope of something that why do we want to cling to this life so much? 
Mm. We want to cling to it because maybe we've missed exploring something relationally or in depth of experience. And our hope is that in the next life, there's even deeper relationship mm. and we get to experience that today in a, in a kind of a clouded view with God. I mean, there was, there's a little bit of a veil still there in our understanding. We don't have perfect clarity there of understanding, but tomorrow that depth of relationship and the exploration of that is going to bring even more joy and the experiences and the things that are made for us are going to be even more beautiful and more powerful. Mm. And when we think of it from that perspective, our hope increases. And our reason for not wanting to leave here isn't because we're trying to cling to a, a scrubby form of it or a less a lesser form. It's because we're still wanting to engage in the relationships that we have opportunity with today. Yeah, it's uh, just a couple comments quickly. Um, I spoke recently at a school and and um, and brought up the fact that Rick Warren's book, whether you like it or not, called A Purpose-Driven Life. And the question is, what on earth am I here for? Mm. And that's like the question. It's They think it sold 65 million copies, which is the same as like Catcher in the Rye and some wow. other really popular yeah. books. So it's way up there in how many books sold. And it's a very Christian book. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's, but the issue is that it's this desire for us to find purpose. And uh, so he answers that question. But um, no, I, so I want to, I want you to complete that, but I want to make yeah. sure this is understood that this is a very biblical concept. Before yeah. the earth was created, uh, God had already have a purpose in mind for each one of us. Yeah. That's a biblical, yeah. uh, that's just stated so, right out. I haven't mentioned this before, but in that time in November 2nd, 2015, and you can listen to a past episode to see what that's about, but I was given what I believe are 23 truths. Mm -hmm. And one of the truths that I received um, was um, Jesus speaking to me. It was like this, this picture of Jesus speaking to me saying, do you think I want the deepest intimacy with you that we could have? I created you. I want intimacy with you. Do you think that, that I would want that, desire that the most? And I said, of course. Like I would desire that with my own child. I want I want to know their heart. I want the deepest intimacy. He said that place that place will happen in heaven when the brokenness and the sin nature and everything will be stripped away. Mm. We'll have the complete deepest in, uh, in intimacy possible. So so why do you think you're still on earth and not with me? And I think the response was, I still have purposeful stuff for you to do. You know, will you do that with me? Yeah. I was, I'm, I'm <laughs> connecting with you. And I was just thinking, and that means relational yes. work left to do here that yes. you're, that we're here for, uh, with family, with friends, uh, with so many people that are maybe even listening to this podcast that they're working on their own relational connection here. And all of us have a purpose. And mm -hmm. so once I move purpose into being relational, it becomes pretty obvious that, yeah, before the foundation of the earth, there was a purpose created for me. It may just be with my family, but it's probably with family, friends, and a broader group than even that. And mm -hmm. so there's deep purpose in that uh, while we're here. I think the hard thing that we wrestle with is that in the next life, you're right, is there's no suffering and pain. But to access it here, we have to go through the doorway of pain. Mm. And um, for me, I don't want to open that door most of the time. I, I want to avoid it. Yeah. But I think here we have to embrace suffering to get to our deepest purpose. And sometimes the suffering of admitting I was wrong, will you forgive me? Because mm. emotional suffering and the emotional suffering that I've caused are some of the great things. But when I see that there's little time left, one of the greatest gifts I can give is taking ownership for what I did. Cause I love the question, Hey, did, did I wrong you in some way that uh, this friend asked you? And I also think there is, Hey, um, sharing what you see in value and looking into other people's hearts too. And 
listening and being able to hear their hearts and know who they are. Deep purpose, deep relationship, uh, without a fix, without um, trying to control, but valuing them uh, for who they are. Mm. All that can be achieved and and worked through uh, this side of eternity. Mm -hmm. And the tighter the window, probably the greater the clarity. Uh, The greater the suffering, probably the greater the clarity. Um, This side of eternity. And then post this, we have hope for great clarity, but also great adventure and great joy, not just boring. More exploration than we could probably ever dream to imagine. Infinite Mm. um, and indescribable. That's our hope. Mm. And in that hope, that brings the last part of our podcast, peace. Mm. Because when we have that kind of hope and when we can see the healing that happens in others as we embrace um, our purpose, that hope grows into peace. And peace is what this podcast is about, having cancer and peace. Yes. Great. So we tied a little bow on it. I don't know. <laughs> but hopefully you got Great something out of this uh, this podcast today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I appreciate you sharing a bit of your stories today, appreciate Peter. That, and sure. uh, if you want more information, go to cancerandpeace.com. And we're going to be putting out more episodes. There's all kinds of resources out there. And we're just glad you joined us today. Thanks a bunch. Thank you. Thank you.